I'm super excited to share how going carnivore, which is basically eating animal protein only, took my blood sugars from this, that, in record time. So I'm going to share five things in this video I did to get fast results on this type of diet as a type 1 diabetic. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not telling you to do this. Let's jump into it. So point number one, I basically had three standard meals a day. And I typically do that anyways with my diet that I eat when I'm not eating carnivore. Um, having consistent three standardized amounts of protein measured out using a kitchen scale. I literally took the protein, put it in the scale, measured it um, before eating it, knowing I would get X amount of grams of protein for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It just made life a lot easier and one less variable to think about when I was tweaking my insulin to figure out how much to take to cover the protein. Lesson number two, constant tracking of my blood sugars. Now I do this anyways using a continuous glucose monitor. It could be done using a regular glucometer, but it'd been a lot trickier. Continuous glucose monitors are fantastic for this type of thing because it tells me in real time what's happening to my blood sugar after I eat a meal, which was crucial with this one because I'm only eating protein, not eating any carbohydrate. I know it's kind of crazy. I don't eat a lot of carb anyways, but this is like basically zero um, amount or very, very uh, minimal amount because I did have cream in my coffee. I'm not giving that up. So lesson number three, analyzing that data from my CGM in real time knowing what's happening, if I'm going low, if I'm going too high, which is not as common. The going high piece kind of eliminated almost immediately, but I did have some lows, so I had to tweak my doses based on that. I'm not gonna share specific doses because everybody's so different, but I will say that just eating protein did result in a lower dose of insulin, and also, um, which is not surprising, but it did require insulin to cover meals. And more than I actually thought, Friends out there, if you're trying this, just keep in mind that, you know, if you just cut out insulin and eat protein, you're probably going to need some protein or some insulin to cover that. Please seek out advice from your medical team. Okay. The next thing to point out there is I used an insulin pump for this. I go back and forth. Sometimes I use good old fashioned Toronto insulin, which I thought about using. And Toronto's that old school insulin that actually covers protein really well. So I could probably successfully do this with that too. But for this particular experiment, I used a pump. And why I decided the pump, a number of reasons. I like the pump because it keeps me level overnight. It's kind of a insurance policy, I guess. I've really gotten used to that, so it's pretty awesome. I also wanted to figure out once and for all how to bolus for only protein. Uh, I can't get a straight answer anywhere. There's all sorts of different techniques out there on the internet, which I've been into, but none of them are tailored to the individual. There's always some variability. So. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, through trial and error and tracking on my blood sugars and analyzing the CGM, doing this glucose monitor readings after the meals, I was able to figure out what square wave to program into my pump. And without getting too technical, a lot of diabetics know what this is, they're on pumps, but it basically, it's the percentage of insulin you get up front, and then it sort of gradually uh, releases a bit of that bolus insulin over time. And that could be 30 minutes to like two, two hours, for example. By standardizing these protein meals, I actually figured out it pretty accurately. So the next point is the final point, really. Point number five, I think. We're on point number five. Ah, whatever. Talking to friends here. Anyways, point number five is for that first week, I eliminated as much stress as I could. Uh, and that includes exercise. Because exercise is one other variable I would have had to consider when figuring out my doses. So, you know, as we all know, exercise can, um, can spike your sugar if it's intense, but it also tends to lower it afterwards and it's just another another thing I didn't want to have to think about while I was getting my numbers in check using this you know bolusing and all that other stuff that, that we have to think about in diabetes. You can't argue with results my friends it, it's crazy like I, I was shocked I didn't think it would be that successful uh, it's absolutely crazy like my blood sugars if you look at my CGM graphs here have gone from from being in range low 80s to high 90s within a couple of weeks. Can't argue with that. I'm not saying everybody should do it. That's pretty intense. And will I do it forever? No. Thanks for watching here and leave a comment too if you want to tell me about trying these crazy